After getting information about the attack that had been launched so that Celine could be taken away, Jack was of course furious. He wasn't sure why they were looking for Celine, but he could somehow relate that this was related to him. But all the same, if they wanted him, then why were they going after the people who were close to him? That was completely unacceptable to Jack. So, he stormed out of the villa, completely ignoring the plan that he was having to check his current bank balance. He got into the Bugatti Veyron that was parked just outside the villa. After that, he accelerated towards the exit of the Serenity residential area. When he arrived at the gate, he didn't say anything to the staff members that were located in that area. After the gate was opened, he furiously stepped on the throttle as he accelerated towards the outskirts of the city where the hotel was located. He didn't care about the traffic lights and so on. He was driving at the maximum speed that the road allowed him. But still, he completely ignored several of the traffic rules and ran red lights. Just as he was approaching the hotel, his phone rang again. After he received it, he received information from Denali that they were moving out of the city. This made him frown for a moment, but understood why Denali had decided to do that. Considering the firepower of the people from the stronghold, it was obvious that the hotel was going to be left in ruins in case they fought there. After being given the location where they were heading to, Jack immediately changed the direction. He made sure to use the shortest routes possible. As for the traffic, that was something that he was ignoring by using the rolls that didn't have that much traffic. After about 10 minutes, Jack finally arrived outside the city. Just outside here, there was a forest. Although the forest wasn't that big, it was a natural one and not artificially planted. Hurriedly, he used the tracking function that was present on his phone and immediately located the place that Celine was. And immediately after that, he rushed towards that direction. A few minutes back, Samantha, adorned in her sleek and state-of-the-art modern armor, faced off against Denali. She didn't want to waste any more time, because the longer she spent here, the higher the chances of Eric arriving before she accomplished what had brought her here. Even though she knew that Denali was stronger than her, she was currently confident that she was going to win. Since Denali didn't have any weapon or equipment, then this was going to be an advantageous situation for her. Samantha, confident in her laser weapons, rushed towards Denali with her armor gleaming in the sunlight. The armor, fashioned from a futuristic composite material, fit her like a second skin, providing her with enhanced protection and agility. Her speed was top-notch as she rushed at Denali. Since she had engaged in fights for a very long period of time, she knew that she had to take the initiative. As she rushed forward, she immediately began activating her weapons. She was ready to utilize her full strength from the beginning. She was facing a person who was one level higher than her after all. Her laser weapons hummed with untapped energy, ready to be unleashed at a moment's notice. However, Denali, although she lacked fancy gadgets and advanced technology, she exuded an aura of raw power and unwavering determination. Denali was going to rely solely on her well-honed combat skills and internal fortitude to face her opponent. Though at a disadvantage due to the absence of specialized equipment, Denali's unwavering courage radiated like a beacon making it clear she won't back down easily. There was no way that she was going to allow Samantha to take away Celine. Samantha made the first move by unleashing a barrage of laser beams towards Denali. The lasers sliced through the air with a deadly precision, creating sizzling arcs that painted the battlefield with a vibrant display of energy. The laser beams were blue in color, and they illuminated the surroundings as they shot towards Denali. Denali, without technologically advanced armor to shield her from the laser onslaught, relied on her unparalleled reflexes to dodge and weave through the chaos. Although it was true that the laser beams were faster, Denali was able to make minute movement, evading the lasers just by a tiny distance. It was in such a way that, if the laser beams diverted for even an inch, then Denali had been hit. As for Celine, she was standing at the side, nervously hoping that Denali called managed to hold on. Even though she could have really wished for Denali to win, she knew the way that the current situation was, Denali was the one who was at a disadvantage. So, it was good enough that she was able to hold on. And even though she had taken the body strengthening solution, she could tell that in case she was the one who was facing the barrage of laser beams, she would be taken down in a single shot. Looking at the devastated ground and trees that had already been blown into splinters, he couldn't help but gulp at the intense firepower of the laser beams. Denali skillfully evaded the beams, demonstrating an uncanny ability to anticipate Samantha's moves despite the lack of visual aids. Denali's movements became a fluid dance, as she expertly avoid each attack thrown her way that I think you should take a look at. 
Samantha maneuvered deftly, exploiting her armor's capabilities to unleash a relentless assault. She would at times engage Denali at close combat, but she was always blown backwards. Even though she was having an armor, that didn't prevent her from being blown backwards from the sheer of strength that Denali possessed. As for landing a punch on her, that was something that she found completely impossible. If Denali was able to evade the laser beams, then there was no way that she was going to hit her physically. She had to depend on the laser weapons, as the laser beams were faster than herself. As the fight progressed, Samantha realized that her laser weapons alone might not be enough to defeat Denali. Her advanced armor, while providing superior protection, failed to give her an edge in strength and resilience. Denali, fueled by sheer determination, capitalized on this moment of doubt. She knew that she had to take all the chances to make sure that she managed to hold on a little long. But at the same time, although she was hoping that Jack could come, she was also hoping that he wouldn't come. After all, facing the laser beams, she just knew how dangerous they were. As long as they managed to hit her, then there was no way that she was going to continue the fight. After all, if her leg was hit, her movements would not as precise as they currently were. That alone was a disadvantage that would enable Samantha to capitalize on. With a fierce battle cry, Denali broke through Samantha's defenses, delivering a series of powerful strikes with her bare hands. Each punch and kick landed with incredible force, utilizing raw strength as her greatest weapon. Samantha struggled to withstand the blows, her armor straining under the relentless assault. Caught off guard by Denali's tenacity, Samantha recalibrated her strategy. Instead of relying solely on her high-tech weaponry, she redirects her focus towards exploiting her armor's defensive capabilities. Samantha engaged her enhanced shielding, minimizing the impact of Denali's strikes. But still, she was completely surprised when she found out that Denali was actually able to deal a lot of damage to the armor. It seemed that when she got back to the stronghold, she would have to change into another armor, or have this one repaired. She somehow managed to escape from the barrage of attacks that were launched by Denali. She had taken advantage of the momentum of the blow delivered by Denali to create a distance between the two of them. Immediately after that, she decided to use her only advantage. Since Denali was also a human, she believed that she was going to be tired at some point. That was going to be the time that he was going to deliver the final blow. Denali, on the other hand, got frustrated. Having lost the advantage, she was first into a passive mode. The only thing that she could do at that moment was to dodge and continuously dodge, hoping that she could get another chance to attack. As the tide of the fight fluctuated, Samantha's laser weapons continued to fire relentlessly, creating an ever-present threat that Denali had to constantly contend with. Yet, Denali, with her unmatched strength and unwavering resolve, pressed on, refusing to yield against the formidable onslaught. In the midst of this intense battle, it became apparent that Samantha's advanced armor provided her with a range of tactical advantages, especially in combination with her laser weapons. However, Denali countered these advantages with her superior combat skills, making use of every opportunity to exploit Samantha's weakness. In the end, the showdown between Samantha and Denali showcased the fine balance between cutting-edge technology and raw power. Samantha, equipped with modern armor and laser weapons, demonstrated the sheer destructive capabilities of advanced weaponry. Meanwhile, Denali, despite lacking such advantages, proved that skill, strength, and perseverance can be formidable weapons in their own right. But that was all to it. Since she was a human, then she was bound to get tired after a long period of strenuous activity. So, after a long 15 minutes, Denali was already sweating and panting. Although she was still trying to fight, she was only holding on through sheer will. Had it been another person, perhaps they would have already collapsed. Finally, something that Samantha had been expecting finally happened. Denali delayed to make a move, and finally, a laser beam hit her hand. Denali grimaced with pain as a wound suddenly appeared on her arm. Due to the immense pain, she delayed to make her movements again. As such, she was once again hit by a laser beam on her thigh. At this moment, Denali had completely fallen into a disadvantage. And even though Samantha had also gotten tired, since she was at a passive mode, she was way better than Denali. Hiki, it seems that I am going to win this. Samantha stated as she laughed. Virum. Virum. Just then, her shop ears detected the sound of a car engine that was approaching at a fast speed. Just from listening to the sound of the engine, she could tell that this was a sport car. What is a car doing all the way here? Samantha couldn't help but question herself. After all, the place where they were, there wasn't any road here. So, it was completely illogical for a car to come over here. She couldn't help but wonder if the car was coming over, because of them. 
If that was the case, then who was it? Of course, since Samantha was able to hear the sound of the car engine approaching, Denali was able to do so as well. In fact, she would have detected it earlier had it not been for the fact that she was currently in pain. Even though she was in pain, she had managed to stagger back and stand in front of Celine. Celine wasn't feeling well at all. After all, the current situation that Denali was in was all because of her. Even though she really would have wanted to give herself in, there was no way that she was going to do that. After all, the reason as to why they had come for her was simply because they wanted to extort something from Jack. And if they had to get her so that they can extort something from him, then it meant that whatever it was that they wanted from Jack was very important. Since she wasn't of much assistance to Jack, then she wasn't willing to become a burden as well. So, currently, she was contemplating on the choices on the moves that she could make. But as she was planning to make the move on which she had decided on, he suddenly had the sound of a car heading in their direction. She looked hurriedly in that direction. At this moment, her heart began beating erratically. She couldn't understand why, but there was a hint of excitement that was appearing inside her heart. Strange emotions appeared, and she somehow felt relieved. Then in front of their eyes, a three-color painted Bugatti Veyron suddenly rushed out. It didn't seem as if it was going to stop at any moment. In fact, it looked like it was going to crash into them. The Bugatti Veyron that was painted a mixture of blue, yellow, and red suddenly appeared. Currently, inside the car, the furious Jack was controlling the car, steering it towards Samantha. Especially when he saw that Denali was actually wounded, the anger that was in his heart soared again. At this moment, Jack's intention to kill someone was at its most high. There wasn't even a time that he had ever wanted to kill someone like he currently wanted. Even though he wanted to kill those who had killed his mother, the feeling was completely different this time. The anger of losing his mother had already gone down for a long period of time. And this time, there was actually someone who wanted to steal away the only other person whom he loved so much, then he had no choice but to kill them off. The matter of the law and so on didn't even ring in his head. At this moment, all he wanted was to eliminate all the dangers that had appeared. Although he wasn't sure for what reason these people were looking for Nathan, he had decided that he was going to deal with them. Even if the strongholds were going to send another group, then Jack was willing to deal with them as well. In fact, he had already began contemplating about going to the strongholds. He had to make sure that he had eliminated the danger to the roots. Perhaps, if he went over there, he might actually find the reason as to why they were looking for Nathan. Upon noticing that the car was actually heading for her, Samantha frowned. Even though she knew that the car wasn't going to hurt her even if it hit her, as a lady, she didn't like getting hit. With swift movements, she managed to move to the side, completely evading the car that wanted to crash into her. Jack had already expected that. After all, the movements of the car were not as flexible as that of a person. So, his main aim was actually to attract Samantha's attention. But since she had moved to the side, Jack managed to stop the car in front of Denali and Celine. The eyes of the two ladies were already glinting with excitement and relief. They of course knew that this was Jack's car. After all, just by looking at the number plate, one could already see Jack's name on it. The car's door was pushed open as Jack stepped out of it. He looked at the two ladies and the side in the relief. Although it was true that Denali was hurt, the injuries weren't fatal at all. From his pocket, he took out a body strengthening solution and gave it to her. You should know that the body strengthening solution is used in a situation like this. I'm wondering why you are always carrying them with you. Jack berated Denali. Denali, on the other hand, didn't say anything and just took the body strengthening solution from Jack's hand and gulped it. The moment that the solution reached her stomach, she suddenly felt a warm current washing through her body. The injuries that she had suffered began healing at the rapid speed. All the pain that she was feeling a moment ago disappeared just as if it was an illusion that I think you should take a look at. Are you okay? Jack asked as he looked at Celine. MHM. Celine nodded her head. To say the truth, she had been afraid just a few seconds ago. But with Jack's presence, all the fear that was in her heart suddenly disappeared. If they were in another place, then she will have definitely jumped into Jack's embrace. But she managed to hold back. Jack was relieved. He then turned around and looked at Samantha who was looking at him with a smile on her face. Currently, Samantha wasn't expecting that Jack was actually going to arrive at this moment. She was so excited that she couldn't stop herself from smiling. But still, she maintained her composure and stated, I never expected that you were going to come here this fast. But all the same, this saves me a lot of time. At the same time, she looked at her wrist where there was a watch-like gadget. On it, she could see that there was a dot that was approaching them at a fast speed. She frowned for a moment 
and decided to end things fast. From her estimations, she believed that Eric was going to be here in about five minutes. This was just enough for her. But the next moment, he was completely stunned when she saw that Denali was back to her feet, just like how she was before the two of them fought. Are you trying to play with me? Where the heck did you get the healing serum? Samantha couldn't help but ask in a loud voice. She knew that if Denali was back to her peak condition, then the five minutes were not enough for her to deal with her, before taking away Celine and Jack. Jack and the party were surprised when they had that. That was of course especially for Jack, as he had never thought that there was something that was like the body strengthening solution somewhere else. But all the same, he didn't want to think too much about that matter. He was going to try and get information out of the person in front of him. Samantha was surprised when she saw that Jack was actually heading in her direction. Take care of her. Jack stated as he began heading for Samantha. Even though he wanted to kill her, he wanted her death to be valuable enough to him. To him, it didn't matter if the person in front of him was a lady or not. Since she had the intention of taking his girlfriend away, then she had to be prepared to pay the price. What are you trying to do? Samantha couldn't help but ask. I'm just going to do something that can show you your mistakes. Jack stated coldly. And before Samantha could say anything, Jack rushed towards her. His speed was completely unmatched, as even Samantha was having a very difficult time following his movements. Before she could even detect where Jack was currently, she suddenly felt immense force hitting her back. Bang! Her internal organs churned, and she felt a sweet taste in her mouth. When she fell on the ground, she spat out a mouthful of blood. She was completely flabbergasted at this point. She couldn't understand what was going on anymore. Boom! And before she could react again, Jack's figure appeared in her vision. Jack didn't hesitate at all as he kicked her away. He wasn't willing to be gentle at her even though she was a lady. When it came to a matter of life and death, there was nothing like a gentleman. After all, if he was the weakest party here, then he definitely was going to be the one who was at the receiving end. Even though she was wearing her armor, there was no way that she could tolerate the pain that she was feeling. The armor that she was so proud of was actually useless in front of the blows that she was receiving. At a point in time, she attempted using the laser weapons, but he found out that they were missing. It was as if they had already been taken away, but she didn't even notice that. Now, why don't you tell me why you were looking for me? Jack stated coldly as he looked at Samantha who was sprawled on the ground, groaning in pain. She stared at Jack, horror clear in her eyes. This time, she was able to tell the reason that he had beaten her easily. Jack was way stronger than her and that she couldn't even get the chance to use the weapons that she had. Furthermore, as she gazed at Jack's hand, she could see that H.A.W. was holding something. Those were obviously her gadgets that contained the laser weapons. But still, the thing that she was the most concerned about was that the person in front of her was not as simple as she had thought of him as. He was an existence that she was never supposed to mess with. For that reason, she was now full of regrets. But all of the blame that was in her heart was directed at Eric. After all, had he not come here, then she would not have followed him. So, he was the one to blame. Added with the hatred that she was having towards him initially, then she hated him even more now. How can a person of your level be here? It is not allowed. Samantha struggled to say these few words. As she looked at Jack, there was a clear hint of disbelief. Why can I not be here? This is my home after all. Jack replied. He could perhaps relate to what Samantha was thinking. After all, a person of his current capabilities was definitely not supposed to be in such a place. Since these people believed that people of their caliber were only found in the strongholds, then it was definitely incomprehensible on how Jack had appeared here. In Samantha's mind currently, she was wondering how it was possible for someone with such terrifying strength to be able to appear here. Furthermore, it seemed that there was nobody who was keeping an eye on him. She was wondering if he was from another stronghold other than the one that she was coming from. After all, the way that the organizations present in the stronghold were like, they will always make sure to keep an eye on each other. That was the exact reason as to why she had managed to detect Eric leaving the stronghold. Since she was curious about what made him get out of the stronghold, she decided to follow. It was not just about the benefits of the organization that he belonged to, but due to the grudges that she held against Eric. Now, better start talking before I force you to. Jack stated calmly. He wasn't willing to continue wasting time with the lady in front of him. He was going to make sure that he could get as much information out of her as possible. After all, he had no clues about the people from the stronghold while they knew so much about where he was. It doesn't matter what your real identity is. For you to be able to become this strong at your age, you are definitely from the biggest strongholds. But no matter what, there's no way. 
that I am going to reveal the secrets of our stronghold even if you kill me. Samantha stated, I will repeat myself again. For what reason are you looking for me? Jack didn't comment about what she said, but instead, he repeated the same question again. Samantha went silent again. It seemed that Jack was not interested in the secrets, at least for now. But still, what he was interested in was the reason as to why she was looking for him. But even she herself didn't know the reason as to why she was looking for him. She was expecting to get several answers out of him, so that she could know what it was that Eric wanted to get from him. Of course, she didn't know about Nathan. Had she known that Eric was actually looking for Jack, because he wanted to get information about Nathan's whereabouts, she will have definitely coughed in anger. Had Eric informed her about this, he would have not wasted her time looking for Jack. Instead, he would have spent her time to look for Nathan's whereabouts. After a moment of silence, Samantha finally spoke. I don't know the reason, ass, to why I was looking for you. In short, I was looking for you just for curiosity. There's another person who was looking for you, and I decided to get you first before he did. At this moment, she didn't hesitate to mention about Eric. Since she was in this position because of him, then she will have to make sure that he suffered as well. The two of them had the same capabilities. For that reason, since she was easily defeated, then it meant that Eric didn't have a chance as well. You dare to play a game on me? Then just watch. I'm going to make sure that you and I go the same thing that I have. Humph. Samantha thought to herself in her mind. Jack's brows twitched. He really didn't expect to get a reason like that. He could tell that Samantha was sincere. Although he could tell that she was telling him this deliberately, he didn't care about that. In fact, he would be even more happy to be informed about the whereabouts of any other member of the stronghold. After all, they were a source of danger to the people that he loved as long as they were not taken care of. And where's that person? Jack asked. He could detect that there was a trace of resentment in Samantha's voice as she talked about that person that I think you should take a look at. He is coming. I think you should be here in about two minutes. Samantha replied. After spending some time on the ground, she had began recovering. That was an ability that was possessed by the people of her level. As long as she was given time, she would recover. Even though she would not be at her prime state, she would be capable of fighting again. The reason as to why she had recovered a little faster was simply because Jack's attacks were not fatal. They were aimed at making her feel pain and not at completely injuring her. Jack could of course detect that. He had to come to find that. After he had gotten to the 10th level, he had began detecting several things that were always unnoticeable by him. Jack smiled coldly. Since the real mastermind was coming, then he was more than happy to entertain that person. For that reason, he decided to wait for a little while. After just about three minutes, Jack detected some movements that were heading their way. It seemed that the other person was in a kind of a hurry. Not long after, a silhouette of a person appeared. It is a man who had long beard. He looked around, both angrily and warily. When he saw Samantha on the ground, he completely ignored the other three figures present at the scene and shouted in anger. Samantha, I told you to get out of my way when I am dealing with the business that brought me here. You came over because you wanted to keep an eye on me. So, stop doing what didn't bring you here. Eric was furious. Since Samantha had the capability to put something that would show her the location that Eric was in, then it was obvious that he too was capable of doing the same. And just today, as he was observing her movements, he found out that he was heading towards the outskirts of the city after spending some time somewhere. And since he had been watching her movements all this while, he was able to tell that she was looking for what he was looking for. Since he had already made it clear that he was looking for a soldier, then it wasn't difficult for Samantha to get that information. Her movements today were very suspicious. That was the reason as to why he rushed over as soon as possible. He couldn't allow her to get her hands on the soldier, then get the information about Nathan. Although getting information about Nathan wasn't much of a big deal, it was going to be a very big deal as long as Nathan revealed a lot of information that he possessed. And that was what he was really afraid of. If Nathan revealed the secret that he possessed, then the secret that they had been hiding for a very long time will definitely draw attention from the other forces. He would then be the biggest sinner of the Panthers organization. That was just unacceptable for him. Do you think I want it anymore? Go ahead and take him if you have the capabilities. Samantha retorted as she struggled to get back on her feet. She was already angry at Eric. Now that he had appeared and dared to rebuke her, there was no way that she was going to remain silent. Moreover, she had been beaten up so badly previously. So, she wanted somewhere that she was going to vent her anger. Huh. Eric was stunned by the reply that he received from Samantha. He was expecting that Samantha was going to taunt him, and he was going to take out a lot. 
so that he could get what he wanted. But unexpectedly, she was actually giving up on the person that he was looking for? From his experience of Samantha's personality, there was no way that she was going to give him a way out. But it was only at this moment that his mind began thinking logically. Samantha was spoiled on the ground, and there were several wounds on her. With abilities, who could possibly be able to beat her into that position? His mind spun as he began of thinking of possibilities. It was also at this moment that he began looking at the figures that he had completely ignored after he came over. There were two ladies and a single man. All of them were quite young and outstanding in terms of looks. But that was not what caught his attention the most. What attracted him the most was the young man who was standing a few meters away from them, watching the two of them curiously. The thing that attracted his attention on that young man was definitely his appearance. It was not that he was attracted by Jack's handsome appearance, but just his general appearance. The two of you look alike. It must be you that we were looking for. I have hit a jackpot this time. The Vice Supreme Leader is definitely going to reward me for this. I must take you back with me. With his eyes shining, Eric shouted ecstatically. At this moment, he had completely forgotten about the situation that Samantha was in. He didn't even take a second to think about how Samantha ended the way she was. All that was in front of his eyes at the moment was a glimmering treasure. He was already thinking about the rewards that he was going to be given when he went back to the stronghold. As for dealing with Samantha, that was something that he didn't even think about. After all, he believed that he was better than Samantha. What's more, there wasn't any good reason for the two of them to fight. Young man, obediently come back with me, or you may make me use force to take you away. Eric stated arrogantly as he looked at Jack. Samantha, who was looking from the side, couldn't help but look at Eric as if she was looking at a fool. At this moment, he even began regretting her choice back then. Jack, on the other hand, was somehow confused by Eric's words. Look alike? Look like who? That was the question that was currently ringing inside Jack's mind. Could it be that there was another person who looked like him? He immediately dispelled the thought that the other person was Jonathan. After all, he had broken to Jonathan not long ago, before he began receiving the monthly rewards. And then again, there was the excitement that was clear inside Eric's eyes. This person was completely excited after seeing him. It was as if he had found something that was so precious that he could actually die to get it. But of course, Jack didn't like the feeling that he was getting as Eric stared at him like that. He was completely dissatisfied with the person in front of him. The real orchestrator of the current situation was in front of him, and instead of actually trying to look for a way to save himself from the coming calamity, he was actually seeking it. Jack wasn't ready to waste a lot of words with the idiot. He was going to talk to him only after he had beaten him up. Taking a step forward, Jack's muscles contracted as he pushed himself off the ground, shooting towards Eric. Eric, on the other hand, was completely stunned. He was caught completely off guard by Jack's move. His pupils contracted to the size of a needle as he hurriedly tried to react to the situation. His heart was already beating hard, and the blood inside his veins was already moving at a rapid speed. Just as he tried to follow the trajectory of Jack's figure, he was surprised that he couldn't actually follow it. The next moment, a heavy blow landed on his cheek, sending him flying. At that moment, a few of his teeth loosened, from the intense force that came from the punch that he received from Jack. Jack wasn't the least lenient with Eric. All of his moves were deadly, ready to beat up this guy to a pulp. With his impressive speed, he managed to completely dominate Eric. Not to mention about blocking the punches and keeps that Jack was sending his way, Eric was simply receiving a beating. It was as if he had become a punching bag, whose only role was to receive blows. Samantha, on the other hand, didn't even try to run away. After all, with the speed of that Jack had demonstrated, it was clear that she wouldn't be able to get away. As for taking Celine hostage, that was completely impossible considering that Denali who had completely recovered was standing next to her. She was not able to beat Denali easily previously, and that was not going to happen now, after she had her been beaten up. And although she had recovered, she wasn't in a good condition at all. The armor on her body had also suffered heavy damage, and as a result, if she faced Denali head-on at this moment, her heavy attacks would definitely wound her. The most frustrating thing would definitely be the fact that she had completely lost her advantage, the laser weapons. Without them, she didn't have even a single advantage to dominate Denali. Bang. Eric landed on the ground, his face completely battered. The armor that was previously hidden below the clothes that he was wearing had already been revealed. At this moment, the armor was already rendered completely useless. Jack's attacks could not be underestimated at all. Although they had high-quality armor, there was nothing that they could do in front of Jack's attacks. In fact, 
Even if the armors could actually block Jack's attacks, there was always a residual force that would land on their bodies. That residual force was enough to harm their internal organs. That was the most frightening part of it. Suffering from internal injuries was something that even people of their caliber would have to take a long time to recover from them in case they didn't get the healing serum. He was currently groaning, with some of his bones already broken. His previous arrogant demeanor had completely disappeared. In its place was a person who was completely miserable that I think you should take a look at. He really couldn't understand how he ended up in this situation. Everything happened in a flash. At one moment, he was the one who was asking the other party to come over or receive a beating. But in the next moment, he was completely beaten up. He had no chance to resist at all. This was only something that happened when he faced the current vice supreme leader or the other people who were also vying for the same position. In fact, he came to find out that the way that the other party was attacking was even more profound than his vice supreme leader and the others. Now then, why don't you inform me the reason as to why you're looking for me? And you will have to tell me why you say that that I look alike with someone. And I want to know the details of that person. Jack stated coldly as he looked at Eric was lying on the ground. At this moment, Eric was still grunting in pain as he tried to endure the pain that he was undergoing. It was also at this moment that a certain thought flushed in his mind. How come I didn't think about something like that? I truly am an idiot. If the two of them are related, then it is obvious that he cannot be a weakling at all. How come I completely ignored something like that? As for replying to Jack's question, he didn't even think about it. There was no way that he was going to reveal the secrets that had been hidden in the organization for a very long time. As long as the secret was leaked, not to mention a person like Jack, the other organizations back at the stronghold will definitely try all means to get what they were hiding. As for him, since he was going to be the cause of the secrets being revealed, then he was going to die either way. All the people of the stronghold were always ready to die. So, he didn't think much about the threat that Jack had given. Samantha who was watching from the side couldn't help but swallow hardly. It was completely different when observing Jack thrashing a person who was at the same level as her. While taking the beating, she could only try to find ways to defend herself and try enduring the pain that had already been inflicted on her body. But now that she had watched from the sidelines, she found out that Jack was a monstrous existence. If possible, she really wouldn't want to provoke a person like him. But she had already done so, and there was no medicine to regret. All that she could do at the moment was to stay at the side and wait for Jack to deal with her. She just hoped that Jack wouldn't be too hard on her. There was no expectation in her that he was going to spare her as she was a lady. After all, the meeting that she had received wasn't something that a person who cared about gender would administer to a lady. Upon noticing that Eric wasn't going to give a reply to the question that he had asked, Jack's expression turned even colder. Without saying another word, he went ahead and stepped on Eric's foot with immense strength. Crack. A cracking sound was suddenly heard, making others get goosebumps. They couldn't help but gulp as they watched the scene where Jack had completely broken Eric's leg. As for Celine, even though she didn't expect that Jack was going to be this cold, she was able to understand the situation. The other party wasn't here with good intentions. And ever since she began training, she had first several gangsters during her training practical period. For that reason, she knew how sinister a human's heart could be. Since the one who was supposed to be a victim was her boyfriend, there wasn't even a hint of pity inside Celine's eyes as she gazed at Eric. If she had the strength, she would have definitely dealt with him personally. Arg. Eric groaned in pain. Although it was true that he had engaged in several fights and had already suffered several severe wounds, at the end of it all, he wasn't a masochist. He didn't like the feeling of pain at all. While he was screaming, Jack suddenly grabbed his lower jaw. After exerting a lot of strength, he managed to make Eric spit out a certain green pill. That was the same pill that Yona had utilized to kill himself. This time, Jack wasn't going to allow Eric to kill himself before he received the information from him. After he had observed the interaction between the two of them, Samantha and Eric, he came to know that the two of them weren't in a good relationship. Another thing that he had noticed was that the two of them wore different armors. With the information that he had received from Yona about there being several organizations in the same stronghold, he knew that the two people that had come over were definitely from different organizations. Eric, on the other hand, panicked completely. He had never expected that Jack actually knew about the pill that was inside his mouth. This was something that every member of the Panthers organization had with them. It was always the last resort for all of them. Now then, you better speak up, or let me make you feel the pain that you have never felt in your entire life. 
Immediately after that, he turned his gaze and looked at Denali and Celine who was still standing at the side. The two of you get back home first. I will be back when I'm done with this. Both Denali and Celine were hesitant to leave Jack alone, but they knew how the situation was. There was not much assistance that they could give to Jack. For that reason, it is better if they left the area and not become a hindrance his plans. Be careful, Celine said with concern in her eyes. Denali on the other hand gave Jack a nod, as she completely had her trust in him. Jack simply nodded in response. After that, he watched as the two ladies got into the Bugatti Veyron, before they drove away. With the two of them gone, only three people remained. Jack stared at Eric who was lying on the ground, waiting for answers from him. Samantha, on the other hand, didn't even think about leaving. First of all, she enjoyed the feeling of watching as Eric underwent a lot of pain. And secondly, there was no guarantee that Eric was going to reveal her location to Jack after she left. But of course, that was on the premise that she managed to leave this place. As for attacking Jack together with Eric, that thought didn't even come in her mind. A person of Jack's caliber wasn't one that could be defeated with the number advantage. Even though they had advantage in terms of weapons and armor, they didn't have enough reaction speed to use them when facing Jack. For that reason, they were easily beaten up. Since she didn't want to get into Jack's bad books even deeper, she decided to be obedient and stay at the side and wait until he was done with Eric. At least, Jack hadn't shown a lot of killing intent towards her as he had done towards Eric. This was enough to tell her that, since she wasn't the mastermind, perhaps there was a chance that she could survive. On the other hand, he wasn't sure that Jack was actually going to kill him either of them. After all, the two of them were very important to the strongholds that they belonged to. Eric gritted his teeth as he tried contemplating on what to do. Currently, it was Ada he gave out the information, or faced the pain. The last result that he had with him had already been taken away, and as a result, he couldn't resort to death. When he saw that Eric wasn't replying, Jack got impatient and began working. Since he had gotten the professional medical skills, he knew the anatomy of a human being so well. For that reason, he knew what to do so that the person he was facing could experience the greatest pain ever. So, he began putting the medical skills to test as this was the first time that he was using the skills after getting them. In just five minutes, Eric had experienced a whole level of pain, one that he had never dared to imagine that he was going to experience in his life. At this moment, he had almost broken down mentally. The pain that he had experienced was definitely unimaginable. The contemplation that was still going in his head about five minutes ago had already disappeared. He currently knew that, in order not to experience the pain again, he had to give the information that Jack wanted. So, without any further delay, he began telling Jack what he knew and was allowed to be said. I will tell you everything. The reason as to why I was looking for you was because of something that we found about five years ago. That is something that I cannot tell you what it is, because I will die the moment that I attempt to do so. Eric's speech was broken because of the panting that he was undergoing. His body was currently soaked in sweat, his hair completely messy. Around him, there was no longer the dignified air of a guardian of an organization. Jack listened to him tentatively, not wanting any detail to escape his ears. The thing that attracted him the most was definitely the reason as to why they were looking for him. At first, it could be understood that they were looking for him because he was involved with the disappearance of Nathan. But once Eric saw him, he actually changed his plans to look for Nathan and decided that he was going to take him instead of Nathan. Since he was related to Nathan, there had to be some kind of resemblance between the two of them, even though it was not that much visible. But to the shop eyes of people like Eric, he could definitely see that the two of them resembled each other, and so, they were related. But when Eric said that Jack looked alike with someone, that meant that there was someone who shared a lot of features with him. For that reason, that implied that the person that Eric was referring to was definitely not Nathan. It had to be another person. But the question was, who was it? That was the information that Jack was looking forward to. But the more information that he received from Eric, the more impatient he got. All the information that was being revealed by Eric didn't have anything to do with the person that was supposed to look like him. Dot, I think you should take a look at. I don't want to know all those stupid information that you were giving me. I want to know about the person that you said that I look like. Jack muttered coldly. Eric shivered when he heard Jack's voice. He could clearly remember the pain that he had undergone not long ago. That was something that he didn't want to experience again. I am sorry, but that is not something that I can tell you. There are a lot of restrictions that don't allow me to reveal such an important secret of the organization. Eric replied. At this moment, he really wanted to cry. 
Had it not been for the fact that the organization had put a lot of restriction on its members, then he will have already revealed the information. He didn't care about the organization anymore. For the people of the stronghold, although the organization that they belonged to was important, it wasn't that much important that they were willing to undergo a lot of pain just for it. Although it was true that the organization had done a lot for them, it was also true that they had served the organization a lot as well. So, it couldn't be said that they owed the organization anything. That was the exact reason as to why Eric had been revealing a lot of information, even though Samantha was present. Even though the information that he had revealed was not deep enough to affect the organization directly, since Samantha had gotten some hints, then her organization was definitely going to investigate about it. If they were keen enough, they would manage to get a lot of information that was capable of being used to deal a lot of damage to the Panthers organization. Jack was completely displeased by this. This was exactly the same thing that happened when he was questioning Yona. If these people from the organization couldn't give him any information that he wanted, then didn't that mean that they were useless to be kept alive? As he thought of that killing intent surged in his eyes. This time, he decided to completely eliminate any future troubles that might come if he released Eric. But before he did that, he thought of something. Who in your organization can give me the information that I am looking for? Jack asked. Eric had never expected a question like that from Jack. But all the same, he still replied sincerely. The Vice Supreme Leader, his two other competitors, and the Supreme Leader himself. At this moment, it could be considered that Eric had already betrayed the organization that he belonged to. But that didn't matter to him. As long as he didn't experience that pain again, everything was okay. Even though he wasn't afraid of death, pain was something that he didn't want to experience. How strong are they? Jack asked. Eric thought for a moment before finally replying. The Vice Supreme Leader and the other two are at the same level. They are both 10-star genetic warriors. As for the Supreme Leader, I don't really know about his capabilities at all. But I am sure that he's already passed the star genetic warrior's rank. Since that is the case, then I guess I will have to pay a visit to this stronghold of yours. I will have to get that information out of the mouth of the Vice Supreme Leader that sent you over. Jack stated coldly. Eric's eyes widened in disbelief. He couldn't help but want to curse at Jack. What do you mean by saying that you want to visit the organization? Then why didn't you allow me to take you there myself, rather than beating me up in this manner? Eric had initially proposed to that Jack had to follow him back to the organization. But in the end, Jack beat him up because of the way that he proposed the matter. He had said that he wanted to take Jack back to the organization as a hostage, and not as a guest. Before Eric could realize anything, Jack made a move and crushed his neck. He didn't want to keep anyone that had ill intention towards him. Although it was true that he had been sent over, it was also true that he had been sent to find someone else. But when he saw Jack, he had actually been so greedy that he wanted to take Jack with him by force. That was the character of a person that Jack would not tolerate at all. If they were offered enough benefits, he was definitely going to attack again. Immediately after that, he turned around and gazed at Samantha. His gaze immediately made her shiver in fear. She had seen it all. Jack had killed off Eric without blinking. He was not afraid of the organizations in the stronghold.